Here's a nice little cartoon. Here we have a hog one. There's the wonton meme. <laughs> so what can you teach? English. And what else can you do, basically? So you want to set yourself apart. That's why the name of our content and language integrated learning program is SPED. In other words, it's meant to trigger in your mind, yes, this is going to look good for me, and this is going to set me apart from a competition. All right. Uh, so the S stands for subject specific. Subject specific, which means when I show you the schedule, you will see. Uh, at the moment, there are three subject options. There is spec math, spec art, and spec science. So if you're interested in any of those, um, you can learn only about your, your subject and how to teach it in English. That's the point here. Uh, professional, which means the trainers that will be working with you are professional teacher trainers. There's also, if you're hiring uh, specialists who have taught math and English, or have taught art and English, or have taught, or have taught science and English, English, of course, the, uh, the, the language of instruction. That's why we're only hiring people with, uh, sorry, we're only recruiting trainees who already have a level of English or have demonstrated. Come on in. Current SMU TESOL student. Who have demonstrated that they are interested in teaching English in English. And it says certificate, but really this is more of an endorsement. It is a, sh it is a short, intense program, and it's an endorsement to your existing qualifications. Uh, here's here's a, a, a schedule just for your reference. Um, this would show you what you'd be studying, particularly on the Saturday course. Uh, so we have one, two, three weeks of instruction with, with a week uh, where you study on your own. And during this week, there are practicum opportunities that we're identifying at the moment where you can go either observe or, uh, or teach using these techniques that you've been studying. Another week of, of regular instruction. And week five is kind of special. I'll tell you about that in a second. There's two weeks to work on your projects and study independently. And finally, an education festival day where you present your projects uh, and graduates, get your endorsement, and throw your hat in the air. So first thing that I'm going to do in my lesson with you guys today is to show you a short video, which will ask you a question. This is a glass of water, and this is outer space. Now imagine that the glass of water is in space. What do you think would happen to the water? Now, I know you guys want to watch the rest of the video and find out what happens, but that will be later. So the first thing that I'm going to ask you guys to do, by yourself, and on the top of the sheet, in the top right, there is a section that says, what would happen to the water? And it says, my answer. So go ahead and take a second, or a minute, write down English or Korean, what do you think would happen to this water? We take it into space, and what happens? It says, uh, we have nothing to say about vacuums. Vacuums are nothing. Vacuums are a lack of anything. Vacuums are cold, empty spaces that make up just about all of the space in the universe. After reading the article, do you have the same opinion? Do you have a different opinion? Why? What is your answer now? What would happen to that water? We've watched, we've watched our first video. We read an article. We did an experiment. And now I'm gonna show you the end of the first video. So you can see. What's going to happen? This is a 
glass of water. And this is outer space. Now imagine that the glass of water is in space. What do you think would happen to the water? Would it freeze or boil or something else? To think about this question, we need to understand that space is a vacuum. That means it's empty. There isn't any water or land or even air. It's empty, except for our imaginary glass of water. We can simulate the emptiness of space in an experiment by putting some real water inside this vacuum chamber. All the air is being pumped out, creating a vacuum similar to outer space. As the air is pumped out of the chamber, the pressure decreases and the water begins to boil, even though it's not hot. So that's what would happen to water in outer space for you to think about. Wait, come back. The water isn't boiling anymore. It appears to be freezing. When the water boiled, it changed from a liquid into a gas. That change took energy in the form of heat away from the liquid water, causing its temperature to drop until it froze. We'll let the air back into the vacuum chamber to make sure. It's ice all right. Now that is something interesting to think about. I agree, video. Very interesting. <laughs> now, who's curious why?